vandaag uh, ga ik langs bij Therese, een vrouw die pas op latere leeftijd meer en meer is gaan ontdekken van haar Nederlandse roots. Pleased to see you. Oh, ik ben Rob. Oh, ja. Yeah. Oh, free. Oh, so sorry. you know that. Do we I speak know Dutch or do we speak English? English, please. Okay, okay. Klein beetje voor mijn Eng voor mijn Dutch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I should have thought about this. Mm. If there's anything I would say that I'm proud of, I am very proud of my Dutch heritage. Yes. Um, I sort of always was, but not hugely, but my son went to a school, mm -hmm. a boys' school, just locally, that had lots of different nationalities. Yeah. He was like 12, 13 then when he started, and he said, Mum, you know, we're Dutch, aren't we? And it all started, they had a multicultural day. Yeah. And every family was uh, brought on to say, well, where are you from? Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, we're Dutch. He goes, Mum, I've told them you'll cook some food some Dutch food. I'm going like, really? <laughs> like Dutch food? Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, and, and here I was making poffages. Well, was I making poffages? I just could not keep up with the amount of these poffages. <laughs> Everybody <making>. liked them. <laughs> and um, I managed to get like a Dutch flag and I dressed my son and myself up in this little Dutch outfit uh, and off we were going. And from then on, he's been, he was obsessed with our Dutch heritage. So it was really him who started asking me all these questions about where mum was from, where dad was from, and all that sort of stuff. So over the years, you know, we had that sort of interest and I'd always promised him that I'd take him back to Holland. So um, when he was about 20, he very naughty asked my mother, his oma, um, for a picture of this windmill that he had. And she had told him it was his favorite, her favorite windmill. And he went and had it tattooed on his shoulder. <laughs> he took this, windmill which is a picture my mum always had in her home that I had watched and watched and watched and I could have you can imagine killed him <laughs> anyway then six years ago lo and behold I met a Dutchman who was born in Holland yeah and you know, had come over here he was in WA had a vineyard over there and we actually met in Sydney we didn't meet in any of our states and that has really opened up a huge heritage for us yeah so when you grew up here in Australia you never felt different than any other? I definitely felt different. Yes. How, yeah. How, why why yeah. was that? Probably one of my funniest stories. It's not really a Dutch story but it was an interesting story. I went to a Catholic primary school. We were in Gippsland, um, dairy farmers and um, we were taken to I was pulled out of class in the middle of a class and I was introduced to this young girl who was my age. I was like in grade one or grade two and I was in a place called Iona and the nun said to me, Sister Bernadette, you have to look after her. She's from your area. I'm going like, my area? Like mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I went, okay. So I sort of grabbed this girl's hand and you have to take her back to class. So I spoke to her. She's just looking at me bewildered. Anyway, she just didn't talk to me. I'm thinking, oh, well, she's shy. You know, she's just come and all of this. Anyway, then I went home and I told my mother, you know, the people she lives just up the road. And, you know, she's from, I don't know, our area. Yeah. My mother says, oh, she must be Dutch. I said, <laughs> she must be. She doesn't speak to me. She doesn't ask me. So mum gets me and we get some biscuits and we, because you know, we're on a dirt road. We're on yeah. our bikes riding up to this family's home. And she introduces herself in Dutch very proudly chatting away to them yeah. and they go, oh, sorry, we're from Yugoslavia. <laughs> and mum said, like, it was just really interesting when we went back to the nun and asked her, she classified us because we were different, that we must be from sort of the same area. Yeah. And that was something that was my first recognition. It's like, oh, I come from this really different area. Um, someone, you know, spotted you as from a different area but did you feel different in in character or the way you, you know you were you know uh, uh, did you felt like oh Australians do things differently than than my parents and, uh, and the way I do it I didn't notice it that much because we didn't have that much exposure other than at primary school you know during school hours that we were different but as I said my mum sort of managed to give us more quote normal food yeah, yeah. so that but yeah I definitely noticed um going to church uh -huh. you know there's a photo that i've got here that shows of all of us the seven of us the two younger ones weren't born and it was taken before church and you know there was this incredible pressure to look perfect and well groomed 
and that I'd go like why do we have to do that because no one else goes to church like that why do we have to look so nice and groomed so those sort of things I just thought it was my mother it wasn't until as an adult and I'm talking I was 45 <laughs> that I went to Holland and I went like okay I am different that's why I'm like that and all of these childhood memories started flooding back to me that made me realize when I went into my auntie's house I'm going like this is like my mother's house yes. another auntie the way my auntie spoke um, like something I always have lots of jewelry and trinkets things on and my cousin said oh you're just like you know you're such a Timmermans you know it's like oh they all love their jewelry that those girls so all these things that started coming to me I realized that I was different at the time I don't think I really realized it but yes definitely when I went back to Holland and I could see these behavior patterns I thought and I have got friends who've always thought I was a little bit you know unusual but I just thought that was my personality yeah. but I definitely do think it's a bit of a Dutch thing yes it was yeah. formed much more than you knew and you realized later that that the way you were raised was, was very Dutch that your mother kept yeah, and yeah. You just thought it was normal. Yeah, yeah. The, the eating, the way we were placed on the table, must sit at the table, the food in the centre. Yeah. No way were we ever sitting on a couch. Yeah. Um, all those things, the keeping your Sunday best, yes. your good clothes, yes. you know, all those type of things. Yeah, yeah the, the cooking, mum um, preserved a lot of fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. And, you know, going back into my auntie's and she showed me around in the garden and there was that tin that they would do all the vegetables and the fruits and, you know, cook them on for seasons. Yeah. But she had the exact same thing that my mum mm. and my mum brought them over mm. from, from Holland. Yeah. But I, as I said, I didn't realise as a child, I thought everybody did that. Hello. Aha. Your... Zachary. Zachary. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Trades his son, yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. Great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You too. Aha, uh -huh, I see it already. That's the... That's your mum talked about this. Yes, it's a, a windmill that uh, my oma gave me a picture of, so I got it specifically done. Why in heaven's sake have you done that? Because I'm very proud of my uh, Dutch culture. Um, I always have been as a little kid, because my oma and sitting down and listening to um, stories when I was a younger kid. Um, also, um, Heza is where it's from, yeah. and she gave me, a, as I said, a picture of it, and she said, because I, because I, I love listening about a Dutch family and heritage, yeah. so she said, that's where I was from and where I was born, and that's the exact windmill, uh, that's why I got it done, and um, yeah, I love it, and I don't regret it at all. Uh, but you couldn't just put uh, Holland or something on it, but uh, you had to be a windmill. I, I, had to, I, had to go, I had to go completely overboard, yes. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been there? Have you ever yes, seen, seen the windmill and stuff? Yeah, I've actually got a photo of myself doing the same pose with the windmill in the back of um, behind me. <laughs> so, which is a very cool photo. How was it to, to, to set foot on the, on the place where your Oma used to grow up and, um, and live? Very gr great and warm feeling. Yeah. Because you know you, you walk in there, you know, you, you know you always go to Omar's place, and it's just a normal house that she's been there for years and years and years. And then you go and see back to how she lived and how and what she did at your age is just a completely different ball game. Mm. You know, just different lifestyle altogether. You know, um, everyone rode bikes, and I'll be honest with you, I can't remember the last time I rode a bike. <laughs> So like, um, well, that's that's what she used to do. And she used to tell me how far she used to ride, and I used to say that you're crazy. That's a long way. Yeah. But that's what they did. Um, there's a couple of little bits and pieces that Mum doesn't know about yet. Mm. But I, one, my next two tattoos that I want to get done um, is Omar came over here on the Queen Elizabeth. No, the Himalaya. The, the, the Himalaya. Himalaya. Sorry, sorry. Um, and part of this tattoo, I want to get the Himalaya boat there down on my arm as well and, and and maybe a couple of tulips as well just says it's a very it's just i'm very i love my heritage and why not unfortunately i don't speak dutch no. which is very bad on my behalf uh, but i'm gonna get there so yeah, i can't blame you <laughs> no <laughs> so, well, it's a very hard language to learn yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so a new tattoo uh, <laughs> am i allowed to say can we edit that <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Look, I, I personally don't love tattoos, 
but you know with all the young kids and things doing that i i think i prefer that it at least is something that it would mean something yeah you know sometimes when you see people they have tattoos and you say what does that mean and they go i just like the picture or something yeah okay. yeah so, or they yeah. have a Chinese symbol and it, yeah, it stands for... Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, when they don't know, have any Chinese mm. heritage. So yeah, the, the tattoo is new to me, but I can understand him thinking that way. But at first when he had that tattoo, I found like, oh, you know, yeah. but I'm sort of used to it now. I'm not going to get a, I'm not going to get a dragon, I'm not going to get Chinese writing, because yeah. most of the time the Chinese writing... You know, you say love and it means something else. Yeah. Like, you know, I won't go into details what some of them could say, but they do. Yeah. Where at least everything that I've done, it's got to do with my background. Mm -hmm. And um, I really don't mind, I really don't mind, and it doesn't faze me if people don't like it, because at the end of the day, it's what I wanted, it's what my heritage, and that's all that matters. Yeah. So. Aha, here's it, you boy, hello. Hallo. Gevraagd met Theresa over haar Nederlandsheid. Merk jij, merk jij dat ook? Dat ze, dat ze veel Nederlands zich in zich heeft? Of vind je het wel meevallen? Uh, ik, <coughs> ik denk dat het in de laatste vijf jaar toch wel een beetje, sinds wij elkaar kennen, toch wel een beetje gegroeid is. Yeah. Um, in het begin was het, ja, was het geen punt voor mij of ze nou Nederlands was of niet. Het was wel grappig dat ik haar moeder ontmoette en die ja, was inderdaad erg, erg direct en erg Nederlands en ook voor mij erg, um, erg representatief voor het gedeelte van Nederland waar ze vandaan is. Lim Limburg, Brabant, echt ja, open, spontaan en natuurlijk toch wel iets anders dan ja, waar ik vandaan kom, waar, waar iedereen wat meer gereserveerd is. En, waar is dat dan? Uh, iedereen, uh, ik kom uit het Westland. Ja, ja, ja. Um, ja. Echt het, 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 het Hollandse. En, en wat ja, in mijn ogen to, toch totaal, en ik klaag er wel eens mee, dat het totaal anders is dan het beneden de rivieren gedeelte van Nederland. Ja, um, ja en haar moeder, ja, spontaan, joviaal. En, en als Nederlanders kijk je toch altijd iets meer de kat uit de boom. En dat, nou, dat was bij haar totaal niet het geval. En zij is een, ja, een Hollandse die in Australië geboren is en opgegroeid is. Um, en wat je wel kan merken is dat ze opgegroeid is in een groot gezin. Ja. En dat, uh, en mijn, mijn, mijn ouders die waren ook uh, ja, boerenafkomst, allebei hele grote gezinnen. En dat, um, maar hoe zit het met jou? Wanneer ben jij naar Australië gekomen? Dan? Ik um, ben in Australië terechtgekomen via, ik, heb, ik ben in het midden tachtige jaren uit Nederland vertrokken. Ja. Eerst tien jaar in Amerika gewoond en toen ongeveer tien jaar in Engeland. En nu ongeveer ja, een goede tien jaar geleden ben ik in, uh, in West-Australië terechtgekomen. En zoals Therese al uitgelegd heeft, ja, puur, puur, puur toeval, kwamen we elkaar in Sydney, uh, in Sydney tegen. Sydney tegen, goed zeg. Ja. En binnenkort uh, je je naar Tade Nat? Ja, ik wil. <laughs> wil. Um, ja, precies hoe en wanneer en waar, dat hebben we nog niet, uh, nog niet uh, helemaal voor uh, uh, ja, geregeld. Nee. Maar dat het gaat gebeuren, dat, uh, dat yes. is wel een feit. Goed. Yeah. Well, thank you both. And um, uh, I hope, uh, yeah, you, um, you, I think you're a great couple when you, you both um, represent Australia and, and Holland in one, in one family and so well. It's really, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Nice Bye. to meet you as well.